Hey everyone, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com. Now, hot topic lately has been the i9-9900K. And yes, I did mean that with a pun, hot topic. Essentially, a lot of people have been saying it does run hot, but I mean, you have to look at what you're actually expecting. You're looking at eight cores in a very small package. <laughs> package. <laughs> Let's look at it and see what we can do underwater. So when we did our i9-9900K review in both written and video format, we actually tested the temperatures at stock and overclock. For some reason, a lot of media actually left this out. I don't know whether you could class them as kind of Intel shills, as it were, or if they just didn't want to show the temperatures in general. I mean, this is going to run hot. It's an i9-9900K. So what you have to look at is, let's compare it against the 7980XE. Very, very similar in terms of core and thread count, but the 7980XE has actually got a slightly larger IHS. It's part of Intel's HEDT range. Because of that, you have a bigger surface area. So yes, the temperatures were hot on that, and then essentially with the 9900K, you're downscaling it into you know, a smaller unit. So we wanted to have a look at sort of temperatures as a whole, not just on air cooling, not just on AIO, but we wanted to get a custom loop going on. So what you actually see is, well, we haven't got the prettiest setup going on here. We've got the 9900K sitting on an Asus Maximus 11 formula. We've got an Alpha Cool block on it, an Alpha Cool 360 mil rad, which is, I think this is a 45 mil if I remember rightly, and a modest kind of reservoir uh, pump combo. Now, we have actually fitted some uh, quick connects on here as well. And the reason we did that is we wanted to do some testing before I'd even started doing this video to sort of see if cooling down the VRMs would make a difference. So as you can see on the bench, we have got pretty much a clusterfuck. That is the only word I can really sort of explain this. So we have our pump going at the moment uh, straight into the CPU block from the CPU block into uh, the VRM area, which is part of the actual motherboard. It's called and everything collaborated with EK. And then that comes out of there back into the radiator and then from the radiator back into, uh, into the pump. So it is a bit janky, I'm going to admit. I mean, just going from the CPU to the VRM, I had to put an even larger bit of soft tubing on there because otherwise it was going to create a kink and that just wasn't going to give us the results that we wanted. There's other things we have to look at as well. So we do have this little guy next to us, just giving us the kind of ambient room temperature. So at the moment it's 22.9. So yes, you could look at the temperatures and go, holy shit, it's gonna be 86 degrees, but you have to think about real world factors and especially ambient temperature. So with that in mind, we're looking right now, we've just booted in, we're completely at, um, at five gigahertz and we're running at 33, 34 degrees as, a, as an idle. So to get five gigahertz is really easy. I mean, the first thing I'm gonna do is set XMP, just so we know that the memory is kind of running where we want. And then um, Azus are actually really good. They have certain features uh, within here. I just need to remember where it is because all the BIOS has changed recently, but they have features where you can um, essentially load a five gigahertz profile. Uh, so what I've actually done is I've set up a user profile as well and um, it's all sort of based in here. I've done a few things myself, so you can see I've got five gigahertz stable and then five gigahertz lower V. So I'm actually gonna load that second profile just because I know this will operate at five gigahertz with a lower voltage. So setting it to that and going back up, you can see that we are aiming for five gigahertz. We have all cores on 50 and looking at the voltage, if we scroll down, you can see that we have a voltage of 1.340. Now, another key thing to look at, uh, especially with an ASUS board, every board is gonna be different, but when we look in the DigiPower, you can see that we have load line calibration set to auto. At the moment it's showing level seven, but generally it goes to level six. So if we boot that up, we can go into Windows, and then we wanna really sort of stress test it. Another key problem that I'm seeing with a lot of people is the stress testing they, that they're actually doing in their, their reviews and sort of other content. Even just general consumers, they're doing stress tests like 3D Mark, which is great, but that's not keeping your CPU at a 100% level. So what we wanted to do is boot into Windows, load up ADA64, and actually do a real stress test. Now, one key thing that I've actually been doing, and I've been working with uh, some other people who have got a very similar system to this. We wanted to see if there was a kind of silicon lottery thing involved, but it doesn't actually seem like that. And temperatures don't seem as bad as what everyone kind of first anticipated. So I've got my system stability test. I'm actually going to start it. And before, um, normally I'd open up something to monitor the temperatures. But the problem with that is it gives you an average and it, you're going to get an average over kind of, you know, something not working. So, what we've done is we wanted to load it up as it's actually putting load onto the system. 
So as you can see, we are running and we've got some temperatures in here and then we load up HW info. Now, one of the key things I've seen between different boards is um, ring clock as well. So you can see we are operating at five gigahertz across all cores, but the ring clock is only at 4.3. When we spoke to one of our friends who, um, some of you may actually know him, Stuart Tonks from D uh, GGF events, He's been testing exactly the same setup, but on a ASRock Tai Chi Ultimate. And his ring clock is actually defaulted with the load line calibration to 4.7. So he was actually getting slightly different results and therefore he was actually getting more, uh, he was getting higher temperatures as well. And that's down to the fact that the ring clock is a little bit higher means that the temperature is gonna be a little bit higher because it feels that it needs a little bit more voltage. But just based on what we've got at the moment, you can see across our cores, the average is sort of 65 to 73, which to be honest is pretty re respectable results. You can see we're at five gigahertz and with the load line calibration, I'm actually getting down to 1.252 volts, which does seem a little bit low. And I thought maybe CPU-Z was giving me some false readings, but then I looked at HW info and that's reading out at 1.329. Now, when I was comparing with other people, again, it does seem like HW info is actually giving an inaccurate reading and CPU-Z latest version is giving us a more accurate reading. So we're currently at five gigahertz at 1.252 volts with the droop and it's completely stable. If you really wanna stress it, you can actually stop this, turn off the CPU and the cache and just stress the FPU. Now what this does is it really sort of ramps it up. And speaking to a couple of R&D people from ASUS, ASRock and other brands, it does seem like FPU, if you run that, it will fall over as soon as possible if it's not stable. And you can see this is running absolutely fine. So elapsed time, we've actually had this going for about an hour and a half just on the FPU test at five gigahertz. But to me, five gigahertz just isn't enough. So let's see if we can push it further. So now that we're back in the BIOS, obviously the first thing that we wanna to do to try and push it further is increase the multiplier on all cores from 50 to 51. That will give us 5.1 gigahertz. And I'm gonna increase the voltage, not massively, but enough uh, that everything should be okay. So I'm going with 1.375, bearing in mind that we do have the load line calibration as well. So we know that we're gonna get a slight V droop. Uh, as you can see, it has, has actually recalculated and it's putting auto at level six. Now it's really interesting as well because in um, part of the BIOS of the new ASUS motherboards is it does give us a prediction based on your cooler. So what it's done is it's actually scored our cooler, 171 points. Then it tells us what kind of non-AVX uh, speed we're gonna get, what AVX voltage and everything we're gonna need, and then what the cache voltage is to get that 4.3. So let's save it there and see if we can obviously hit 5.1. I'm pretty sure it's gonna boot into Windows, whether it's stable, let's find out. So again, now we're booted at 5.1 gigahertz. Looking at CPU-Z, we're currently drooping at idle at 1.35, even though I'd set it to 1.375. So again, we're just gonna start the test. We're gonna run all three CPU, FPU, and cache. And then in the meantime, we're gonna look to uh, open up HW info, but it's fallen over. So like I said, it did get to Windows, but no, no, we're back, we're back, okay. Let's try that again. I was actually a bit dubious then whether it would even carry on stressing, but we're gonna reopen HW info and see what kind of temperatures we get again. So this is now 5.1 gigahertz. Uh, core voltage is actually dropping down on the V-droop. I still call it V-droop. Obviously I know kind of the terminology's changed, but to me it's still V-droop, um, but it's drooping down to 1.288, 1.296, which to be honest, 5.1 gigahertz on a processor that has eight core 16 threads is pretty bloody good. So 5.1 gigahertz, the ring clock is still at 4.3. Maybe in another video, we will kind of address the ring clock and sort of maybe do some benchmarks of five gigahertz with the ring clock at 4.3, and then maybe see if we can bring that up to say 4.7, run some more tests and see if the ring clock actually makes a difference. This is all down to the speed between talking to the memory controller, the cache. So passing them instructions through at a quicker speed may obviously give us a, a boost in uh, performance. But now again, temperatures, we're looking at averages, we're looking at 73, 69, 76, 72, 75, 74, 73, 73. You've got to remember with these processors, a lot of people get scared with the whole 100 degrees. They, they think that's kind of the magic number. It used to be, but the thermal threshold on this particular processor, the i9-9900K, is actually 115 degrees. And you can go into the BIOS and you can set that to the max because what you'll find otherwise is it will start thermal throttling down, which isn't what we want. Another key thing to look at as well, which is really interesting, is the CPU package power. So our average at the moment is 175 watts. When we were talking to other people with similar setups, 
they were finding that theirs was coming in at about 220, but again, their ring clock was slightly higher. So maybe there's something to do with the ring clock being higher, requiring more voltage just to get that, which was then obviously increasing the, the power. We again played with that and we only found really it got to about 185 watts. So to me, there's still quite a lot of area that you can play around with in terms of the power. It hasn't quite hit that power threshold and it certainly hasn't hit them temperature thresholds. Like I say, we're not above 76 degrees across one of the cores. Now, what I wanna do is see if I can get to 5.2. Also guys, in this video, you've gotta remember, I'm not showing you the stress test going on for ages. You, you're gonna kinda of have to take my word for it, but we have actually run these stress tests for prolonged amounts of time. But I just wanted to get sort of enough in a video that you guys can see. Stability isn't really a problem. Temperatures aren't really a problem. Power delivery is not really a problem. So I don't know what all the hoo-ha was about temperatures. So now that we're back in the BIOS again, we're at 5.1 at the moment. We're gonna go for the ambitious number of 5.2. Now you gotta remember, there's a very, very small percentage of chips out there will actually do this. Now I don't know how our engineering sample kind of differs with the retail chips. And I don't know obviously if Intel are gonna start sort of pre-binning chips or anything like that. Obviously overclockers and people like that are gonna to look to delid it, which I may, do in the, may actually do in the future. I've sort of seen some initial preliminary results, 10 degrees just taking off of there. Even though we have a soldered tin, it might be worth delidding it, putting on some liquid metal, even lapping it. And I think even Gamers Nexus have already done this, so it might be worth checking that out. Now that we've got that at 52, again, we just want to increase the voltage. I'm going to increase it to 1.4 because I know it's going to droop anyway. And I'll probably end up running some tests sort of off camera at some point where we look at potentially doing 1.375 volts with a V droop coming down and then maybe 1.36 volts, but having the V droop slightly differently. So we're getting more of a kind of base uh, voltage, if that makes sense. But again, we're gonna boot into Windows and see what it does. So now we're booted, we're at 5.2 gigahertz, which is exactly what I was after. At idle, we are sitting at 1.376 uh, with the droop. I'm gonna start my stress test on the right one, uh, taking away system memory. So we are just running CPU, FPU, and cache. And it's ready to go. Again, open up HW info while it's already benching because we want the load and um, before i've even actually got into hw info uh hardware failure detected and it stopped but i'm going to start it again and it blue screened so 5.2 gigahertz at 1.4 volts with a v-droop is clearly not possible but there's nothing stopping us maybe changing the v-droop or going that little bit higher on the voltage so let's do that so blue screens aside back in the voltage is in the bios so we're going back down. Again, we could change the V-droop or we could just increase the voltage slightly. I'm gonna go with 1.425, which obviously does seem high, but under a custom loop shouldn't be a problem. I've got no real issue with temperatures. The only reason you wouldn't really put more voltages in is if you have an unstable system through lack of power. So that could be your power supply or how it's being delivered to the components on the board. With the other side of it, it would be all down to temperatures, but our temperatures weren't even getting into the 80 degrees. So I'm not really too fussed about chucking more volts at it because I know the temperatures are still gonna be okay. So let's boot into Windows and see what it does now. Okay, so back into Windows and again, uh, we're still at 5.2 as you can see in CPU Z. The core voltage at idle is reading 1.412. So I set it to 1.425. So like I say, it is drooping a little bit. It's now down to 1.403. So let's turn off system memory. So we're just again doing CPU, FPU, and cache, and we want to start it. And in the meantime, start HW info. I haven't got the error message straight away, so things are looking up, I guess. And then opening up, you can see again, 5.2 across all the cores. The ring clock is still at 4.3, uh, going down to temperatures. Averaging, again, 60s to 70s. I've got one anomaly here, one core, core number four, which is at 84, 85 degrees. Bear in mind, this process can go up to 115 degrees. So I'm, again, not too bothered about that. I think 5.2 should be, it should be able to do it. But again, we've got a hardware failure. So I don't know, guys. I could probably throw some more volts at it and maybe that's sort of one that we can do in another video after I've done a little bit more testing. But I wanted to see what's restricting people from pushing the i9-9900K? As you saw, we've got 5.1 gigahertz stable. 5.2, we've got into Windows. We even got it to run the test for 32 seconds. I just feel that maybe it needs a few more volts. I can probably even play about with the system agent voltage a little bit. 
and see if I can get some stability across the PCH as well. Maybe that's kind of where we leave this video. Let us know how far you want us to delve into this. Do you want us to go even further? Or would you be happy with five gigahertz across all cores? Would you rather have five gigahertz and then bring up the ring clock instead closer to sort of five gigahertz so it's more in line? Or are you happy to have that at 4.3? Again, like I said, maybe we'll do a video where we kind of look at the the differences in the real world between having that low kind of 4.3 ring clock and having something a little bit closer to the actual core clock that the process is doing. For now, I'm gonna probably spend quite a lot of time doing that, um, sort of seeing what test results I can actually get out of it and seeing if there is a performance increase as well. It is also worth noting that since we started filming at sort of, you know, 22 degrees, it's now at 24.2. So it is getting warm in here and I can only foresee it getting even warmer. But to be honest, feeling the temperature of everything on the system, it still feels really cool. So i9-9900K, maybe it's not as hot as what we once thought. Maybe it's just a lot of stuff in a very small package. Famous last words, eh? See you in the next one, guys, and remember to subscribe. Bye-bye.